Good evening, YouTube. How you guys doing tonight? Okay, so this video right here, um, I'm going to be doing is um, for another request because I do a lot of KE videos and I show a lot of Trail Boss stuff on my thing. And I know, I'm sorry about my voice once again. I'm still sick. Very, very sick. Um, this is going to affect, this video is mostly going to affect the people who have the G390s, the Trail Boss 100s, those sort of bikes. Even the, um, what do you call it there, the G3 M1s and all that type of stuff. So this video right here is really kind of for you guys, okay? Um, what this video is about is about electronic ignition on those older bikes. Um, there's a ton of these bikes out there, guys. There's a ton of them. And, um, <clears throat> excuse me, some of the parts are hard to find, but I'm going to help you as best as I can. I went through my stuff and I grabbed out a bunch of older stuff and a bunch of newer stuff. And what you got to do to convert your bike to CDI or to 12 volts or both. Okay. Last night I did a 12 volt conversion video explaining as a part two to a video I did previously. Try not to confuse you. But I know a lot of you guys watch all my electronics or electrical videos. And um, so I did one to clarify how it was done. So tonight I'm going to touch base real quick. And I'm going to show you those two yellow wires real quick. Um, I showed you guys. This is an extra one I have. Um, an extra CDI um, ignition right here with the three posts. And last night I didn't have one that was off of a motor. I used the one that was on my KE-102. So, But this is an extra one I have. So anyway, I had um, I explained to you to unbolt it and cut the two yellow wires in the back. And they're, they're just showing you, here's a three post right here from another one I had. And you just cut the yellow wires right there and you can tap right into them. Okay? So that's how you can, that's when you put your 12 volt coil on right there. The yellow with the red stripe and the white wire are going to go. One's going to go to one yellow, one's going to go to the other. You just got to make sure you match them on the other end, okay? And what do I mean by match them on the other end? I mean match them up to the regulator two wires. And then the red wire goes up to your battery. Real simple system for a 12 volt. Now for you guys who have the um, bikes I just explained to you guys, the G3, um, 90, and the Trail Boss 100s, and those older bikes... That have, um, what did I do with it? Right in front of my face. This wiring nightmare right here. Okay, you have all these wires and you don't know where they go. Okay, and you have the same plate. This right here on this motor. Right here, this is a KE100 motor. Okay. These parts are exactly the same. They will bolt right on in place of one another. The coils are in the same place. Everything is the same except for the wiring As you can see This one right here these two wires. Oh my god. I'm gonna get you one here These two wires right here were cut, but it had another connector look just like that on it They had another white connector on it So basically this is for your ignition the black wire the green wires for your neutral safety switch or a neutral safety light and then these are for your alternator, okay? On your bikes, on your trail bosses and all those, you have multiple wires. The green wire right here is for your new, your neutral light. And the black wire is for your ignition. And then you have this uh, pink one right here that goes up to your ignition switch. Um, you got your two charge wires. And I'm really not sure what this wire right here goes to. But it really does not matter. So... Um, we're going to get into this hot and heavy. I'm going to show you why that doesn't matter in a minute. I didn't mean to just say, you know, like, hey, if you don't know where it goes, it doesn't really matter. No, um, there's not really good schematics for the wiring on these things. So, um, but for what we're doing, it really doesn't matter. Okay, where are we at? Let's get back down to a, trying to shrink you guys down here. There we go. Perfect. <coughs> Okay, so we're going to do this a couple of different ways, okay? 
the first way we're going to do it is if you wanted to keep your bike with the points ignition and just add the 12 volt coil you're going to have to cut this harness remove these two coils and you are going to eliminate all four of these wires here okay so then you're just going to have those two <coughs> when you remove <coughs> these wires you're going to notice your bike does not have a voltage regulator okay your bike does not have a voltage regulator. Your bike has a, if you have a G3 with the 90, you're going to have this. This is a diode, a.k.a. bridge rectifier. How does a diode work? What is it? A diode only allows voltage to go in one direction. All right. A diode also converts AC voltage to DC voltage for your charging. So you have alternating current. It goes into the, um, the rectifier or the diode. And now it comes out as um, direct current. Which is what a battery needs to charge. If you have a Trail Boss 100, you're going to have this. This is the waffle style. And it's basically just a, a piece of waffle, as we call them. A couple of insulators and a diode. Okay? It's all the same. Two wires on either end. <coughs> I always get rid of those because I don't like them. They overheat, they pop, and then there's no fuse for those. It's just a mess. Anyway, so we can go any way we want with this Trail Boss, any way we want with the um, the G3. You can easily mount this um, this magneto plate into your bike, into your um, Trail Boss 100s, okay, it's going to bolt up the same, you're going to have to change the terminal end, so it has the older style connector, see the newer ones are push-ons, these ones are screw-ons, okay, so you have to change the connector on that, then up at the other end, okay, you're going to have to get a regulator. Plugs in there. Voltage regulator here. Your uh, black wire is your ground. Your white wire goes up to your battery. And now your charging system and ignition system is complete. The black wire that's on here is going to go up to your coil. And the green wire is going to go up to your neutral safety light. That's all you need to know. Okay, so that green wire is going to match up to the green wire on your original ignition. You can even cut the square connector off and solder that one on in place. You're going to do the same thing with the black wire. This is for your ignition. It's going to go right on that black wire right there. Those are the only two wires you need to keep off that harness. And then you have yourself an ignition and charging system. Real simple. If you keep it with the um, CDI, you're going to have to change the coil to the style coil. I did a video on CDI coil. The CDI ignition is built into the coil. See how fat it is? I did a video on these. Check out my video on um, points ignition to CDI on the KE100s and you'll get all your information on that. And, of course, you're going to have to change your mag over. This is a three magnet for the points. This is a four magnet for the um, electronic ignition. Okay? Now, we're going to take this and we're going to go one step further. Okay? Everything I showed you in my last video on how to convert this over to a 12-volt system... You can see the two marks, the circle right there. You center punch them, and you tap them, and then you got to grind out some of the aluminum. And then you can put this coil right here in place from a Moto 4 Yamaha, and it's matching ignition, uh, matching uh, voltage regulator. 
Okay? Now, you just took your 1970s whatever, um, a G3, um, what do you call it there, 90, or your, um, your Trail Boss 100, and now you just converted it, that's simple, to a CDI with 12-volt ignition. That thing is going to do great at night with the lights. Here's why I like this Moto 4 system. This has enough output to charge a battery for an electric start system. Because the Moto 4 is not kick, it's electric. So you're going to have the amperage you need to charge your battery, your 12-volt battery. And you're going to have really bright lights because you're not using it to turn over an electric starter. <clears throat> you're going to have to take your 6-volt battery. Here's what you do. You take your 6-volt battery and you take measurements of it and you go online and you research your battery in a 12-volt. I'm going to be doing that pretty soon. I just haven't got to that point yet um, to get you guys battery numbers. But... So far, I got all the parts and pieces, and I've given you the knowledge to, to transfer them over. They're real simple to do, and trust me when I say it, it's worth it. I mean, think about it. You can run LED headlights at night. You can go riding for miles. We don't have to worry about it. That's going to be bright as hell. So... Um, that's the reason why I'm doing these videos, is to help you guys convert your bikes over to make them bigger and better. And I got asked a question, so I'm going to answer the other question. What bike has the CDI? What year do I have to order this from? <coughs> and is that plate the same as the points plate? Was the other question I got. Okay, the points plates are different. Okay, the point plate and the mag plate are totally different plates. One you can see with the four, one's got the three. The one with the three has the three magnet, the one with the four holes has the um, the magneto. And you can actually see from the back side how open it up it is. Now you don't have to open the side up wider, you have to lengthen it. Okay, but it's all there, you can do it. Okay, so here's what we got. We got <coughs> the points plates are different, and so you're going to have to get this off of another Kawasaki KE100, and the question was, what year? These are available on 1996 or 1995, late 95, almost into 96, to 2001, okay? That's where the points uh, ended was in, in late of 95. They went over to 96, and all the 96 got the uh, CDI. <clears throat> Why would I want to transfer over to a CDI? Lower idle, better fuel economy, smoother acceleration, a smoother idle at, a smoother lower idle, and it doesn't, at high RPMs, okay, it doesn't have float. What is points float? This is the cam. I explained this before. I'll explain it to you guys again. Every time the cam comes around, opens it up. The faster you spin that engine, this is spinning at high RPM. Now, as opposed to it nicely opening up, it's kicking it. And now it's it's opening up further because it's floating. It's kicking. So this thing is barely, it's, it's barely touching. It's going so fast, it's barely touching. What happens? You lose spark. You lose power. The bike tends to slow down. You have a lower power band. This is going to give you a better power band than your points ignition. If you took two Kawasaki's, an early 95 and a 96, okay? Same bike. The only difference between the two is the ignition and the decal on the tank. Okay? That's it. There's no other difference. Oh, and maybe the color of the seat. <coughs> other than that, the same right out of the box. Okay? You fire both of these bikes up. 
and you go to take off, the one with the points is going to, the one with the CDI is going to perform better. It's going to have more top end, and it will beat the points ignition. It's also maintenance free. In other words, you don't have to pull the flywheel off to do anything to it. Okay? So, every now and then, you're going to have to pull your flywheel off. You got to buy specialty tools. You got to torque the, the flywheel bolt down to 36 foot pounds every time you go do maintenance. Okay? <clears throat> With the CDI, you don't have to touch it. You put it on, you get her done, and you forget about it. You just simply put your ass on the seat and ride the bike like you stole it. Okay? You don't get that with points. Points require more maintenance. You're always gapping them. You're always checking them. And it's always in the back of your mind. If I'm on a trail, what if my points go? Now I got to push the bike back. The CDI is very reliable. Very good quality stuff. If you want to keep your bike 6 volt, you can. You can keep your factory 6 volt battery. There's no other wiring. Okay? Or you can change over 12. Then you have to replace the uh, relay. Not the relay, the regulator. Now, when you replace that, I know what your question is. What do I do with this? You take it and you throw it away. If you have it with this style, you take it and throw it away. Now you don't need it. Because after it's after you've got these connected, the black wire is your ground. The white wire is your power going up to your battery. That's it. There's no cutting into your main harness. <coughs> There's no changing anything over. The only thing you have to do is lob this square head off and match the two color wires with the green and the black. That's it. The black is for your ignition. The green is for your neutral light. Real simple to do. Real easy. And, of course, you got to make sure if you're using a CDI, you got to change your coil because the module is built into the coil. Now, when you go to, um, when you go online, and you go to, uh, what do you call it, the eBay, hold on, I'll be right back, I gotta go grab something real quick, be fast. Sorry about that, I forgot to grab it. Okay, if you go on eBay and you look up a coil for the KE100 or the CDI, you're going to see this crap thing. Okay? This is not a CD box. It is not a CD coil. It's a CD coil for an external box. If you have a scooter or something like that, I don't know why they have it on eBay as for the, it fits the KE100. It does not fit the KE100. In fact, it's not even a high-performance coil as they say it is. It's just a regular coil. It's orange. It's got an orange lead. There's nothing spectacular about it. In fact, it's so crap it don't even have a name or a part number on it. <coughs> That's made in China. Okay? This is not compatible with this. This is not compatible with this. This is a 12-volt coil. The only way this is going to work on your bike is if you had a 12-volt ignition system. We do not. Do not buy or use this coil. It will not work. It's junk. <coughs> I got a bike. I bought it up in uh, Vermont. This the guys like all oh, the um, what do you call it there? The bike stalled out. It wouldn't run. He said he goes. He checked everything over and they found at it needed a coil. So the guy picked the bike up from the from the bike shop, brought it home, bought this coil online, 
mounted on, it still wouldn't run, and then he couldn't figure it out. When the bike required this style coil, <coughs> the problem was this doesn't have a module in it. There's no points to check. It was CD. eBay said, this is a CD coil. It is not, unless you have a CD module. The module's built into the original coil. So the guy ended up selling me the bike. I did not know that he replaced the coil. So I ended up getting the bike dirt cheap. And I felt like a jerk. When I got home, I pulled the tank off. Because he said it needed a coil, I was going to switch out the coil, and then I saw this. I'm like, you kidding me? I wasn't about to go all the way back up there. But you get the idea, okay? So this is the coil that came on that bike, and it's junk, okay? It's junk. So, anyway, just to let you guys know, you see the orange coil, run like hell, don't buy it. All right, so that's pretty much what I got for you. As always, use the proper tools. Don't bang on the magneto. Get the flywheel removal tool. Also, too, you're going to torque it down to 36 foot-pounds of torque. Okay, that's what you're going to torque the, uh, the flywheel, not to it. Do not use an impact gun. Do not zap them on with an electric gun. Torque them. Take the time, torque them, because these are fragile. They will break. I've seen it happen. I have a motor in the other room that that is shipped out because they went monkey tight on it. And when I say monkey tight, I mean gorilla. Gorillas have a lot of superhuman strength, and that's exactly what they did. They just they ripped the threads right out of it. Okay? So if you guys have any questions, by all means, please send them my way. This video is for those who have the G3. Or, you know, the G390s, like I had, I showed you that green bike there. And like the, um, what you would call it there, the um, Trail Boss 100s, they have spaghetti wiring. That's what I call it, spaghetti wiring. <coughs> Don't worry about these wires. Don't even think about them. Oh, there's extra wires going to go? No, just unplug them. Put a logical tape around them. Leave them. See ya. Cut this wire off. Cut this wire off. Cut the connector off on the green and black wire. Solder. Do not use butt connectors. These are junk. Don't use these. That's bad. Take a soldering gun, a soldering iron. Solder these two wires together. Use heat shrink tube or electrical tape to cover over your solder. Make sure you put a fair amount. Make sure you pull it tight. Make sure it's nice. I prefer... Um, heat shrink, which I showed you in that video, but you can, if you don't have a heat shrink gun or a heat gun, you can use electrical tape, it's, that's fine. <coughs> then, once you get these on there, just plug them back in your harness. Same thing, if you change over to a newer style, either way, you're going to use the KE100 regulator. Use the one that does not have the brown wire, there is, it is... This is a four wire. They make a five wire. You want the four wire. The five wire has a white, a brown, a black, and two yellows. You don't care. You don't want those. You want the one that has the white, the black, and the two yellows. They both will plug into each other, but the brown is something totally different. Don't get into it. Don't even use it. Don't even think about it. Just don't buy it. So when you're looking at it, you're looking for the four-wire voltage regulator. That's the white and the black. That's going up to your battery. That's your charging wire. This is your output DC voltage. The black, that's your ground. The two yellows, all the way down to your coils. <coughs> and that's pretty much it, guys. That's what I got for you. I hope this helps. And uh, I hope you guys like it. And um, thank you guys for watching. Once again, the 12 volt conversion parts are two parts, a regulator and a coil. These two right here are off of a Yamaha Moto 4, okay, 80 cc's. So when you go, there's a ton of Moto 4's, these are off the 80 cc's, 
Okay, I didn't say that in my last video. I forgot to mention it. But it's off the Yamaha Moto 4. 80 cc's. Early 90's. Early 80's. <coughs> early 80's. And you can also get them off the Champ. The Yamaha Champ. Same bike, same motor, same stuff. That's where it's at. Okay? So, um, anyway... Thank you guys for watching. Please subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, by all means, please send them my way. We're going to be doing a ton of videos. I got a ton of stuff to cover. Guys, thank you for the comments. Thank you for the questions. Please keep them coming. If there's anything I can do for you, by all means, please ask. And um, hopefully this will help you out. Thanks for watching.